guys welcome back on board it's everyday affairs where we bring you special and trending news from around the world with special focus to nigeria and africa all right about now i'd like to encourage you to join, subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe and uh but eventually you're coming across this channel for the very first time i welcome you on board and i'd like to encourage you to please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever a new story is updated Thank you and welcome on board. Presidency Defense Service Chiefs blames Libya for insecurity. The senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, has said the military is doing a good job and deserves the support of Nigerians. On the calls for the sacking of service chiefs, Shehu said, those criticizing the president did not have the kind of information he had as regards security and thus could not pass informed commentaries. The president's spokesman said, said this on NTS Good Morning Nigeria program on Monday while reacting to calls for the removal of the service chiefs. He said, our armed forces are doing an enormously good job. They are not sitting on their laurels, but the challenges have mounted because of factors extraneous to the zone, and Nigerians should have an appreciation, should have an appreciation and be sympathetic and see that all the things about the collapse of Libya is not fairy tale. Europeans for their competing interests in Libya were dropping weapons into villages in Libya. A lot of these elements have found their way into ungoverned spaces in the Sahel. Could it be better with the second of the service chiefs? My sense is that the president as the commander-in-chief is not a novice in the first place. He was a military commander a military head of state and the latitude of opinions available to him is not available to most of the critics so it is wrong of them to interlope in a way and begin to speak on matters of which they do not have the competence to pass judgment i hope i don't seem arrogant but i am stating facts as they are garbashe who stated all right, guys, you've heard what um, the spokesperson of the president has come out to say. They're putting the blame on Libya. Um, well, now at least the land borders are closed. So how does um, um, guns and um, you know other ammunition find their way into the country? They should tell us because they closed the border for quite some time now. Running into months now, they have refused to open the border. So how are these ammunition finding their way? into the country so it's surprising all right we live in a world that has walls and those walls need to be guarded by men with guns in other words for us to feel secure in our world we must have the walls heavily protected this is what is absent this protection is absent as security in nigeria today we we'll remember that it started in 2009 when Boko Haram, a terrorist group, launched its attack in Bauchi. The group's 11 years insurgency in northeast Nigeria has led to the deaths of many people, destroyed thousands of schools, and displaced over a million people. At the closing week of December 2015, while addressing the BBC and other reporters, President Buhari commented that the terror group's activities had been, to a large extent, copped. Therefore, it had been technically defeated even when there were recent attacks as of then. So, are we still claiming that the Boko Haram has been technically defeated now? Going by the recent attacks, going by the level of attacks that this country has witnessed. Lamentably, this insurgents on Monday, January 20th, killed Reverend Lawan Andimi, 
chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria in Michika, local government area, Adamawa states. And don't forget that they rejected a 50 million naira ransom and they instead executed him. While on his way to school on January 9, a 200 level student of the University of Meduguri, Taleb Gachia, was abducted by the sect and was decapacitated. The video of his mother was released by this Christ on January 22, gruesomely. A very gory sight. Similarly, on the Christmas Eve, these guys had killed 11 Christian captives in Borno State to avenge the deaths of Abu Bakr Baghdadi, the late Islamic State leader, and Abdu Abu Hassan Al Muharijir, or something like that, their spokesman, who were killed by the United States forces. Dispiritingly, they often strike deadly blows anytime the Nigerian government claims they have been technically defeated or degraded. What an irony. Have you noticed? It is every time the government comes out to say that they've technically defeated them or they've defeated them when you were, or the Boko Haram has done this and that. That is when that is when these guys come out with another means, another way of attacking these people. What an irony. That the military is underfunded and underequipped in its battle to check these guys has made this sect almost impossible to be defeated. It is incontrovertible that corruption has eaten deeply into the fabrics of the fight against the rampaging insurgency with its telling effect on the soldiers who are now less motivated to fight. That's the truth. Corruption has eaten deeply into them. Corruption everywhere, corruption everywhere, corruption everywhere. Government officials corrupt, even the military leaders are corrupt. They can't be telling us that they are ill-equipped or under-equipped or underfunded. It's no longer the case. That was what they were claiming when uh, Good Luck Jonathan was the president. But now, what do they want to claim? Are they still under-equipped? I don't believe so. With the huge amount of money being spent, with the ammunitions that were, sold, or were sold to them by President Donald Trump of the United States. So how come they want to tell us that they are underfunded or they are not um, well equipped? These are stories that touch. The presidency does not have any excuse this time around. And that is why a lot of people have called for the uh, sacking of the service chiefs. Mr. Garbashe is saying that people do not have the information. Good, that, that, that's the truth. Or oh, we believe that. But regardless of the information that the president has and at the disposal of the president, why has he kept the service chiefs since 2015? Just look at what was revealed just yesterday. How Abakari is the one dishing out the orders having meetings with high commissioners, embassies, ambassadors, here and there, service chiefs here and there, running the affairs of the country where there is a president who was said to be duly elected and voted for into office. So where is the president if Abakari is the one who an ordinary chief of staff, if he is the one running the affairs of the nation? Giving out instructions, telling every minister, having me instant with minister who do that is to say, what is a figurehead? What is a figurehead? He's not the one in charge, and it goes a long way to you know to to to, to bother Nigerians. And the Nigerians are asking, Are we sure Buhari is the one actually that we are seeing? Because if Buhari can be there and Abakari is the one holding all these meetings, as revealed by the um, memos that uh, the NSA sent around, please tell us. Please tell us. Are we sure that person we are seeing is Buhari? How are we sure that is the president of the nation? How are we sure what Namdekanu has claimed 
is not what is happening. He goes, Abba Garrick, the chief of staff, cannot take the position of a president. He was not in any way elected. He did not swear any oath of any any he did not swear to any oath of office. What is going on in Nigeria? So Garbashi should spare us his rhetorics. He should spare us his excuses. Garbashi should spare us all the stories that touches the heart. This is what is obtainable elsewhere. Once, you know, insurgency persists and, you know, the service chiefs are trying, they seem not to have a solution. They are let go and another people, um, um, you know, appointed. If President Mamadou Buhari wants to let Nigeria know, or wants to show Nigeria that he is still in charge and he has the control of what is going on, then and then he should send the service chiefs and put things in order in perspective and let things begin to happen. Anyways, these are my views and my thoughts on this particular news story. I'd like to hear from you what your thoughts are. Can you drop out the comment section and let's understand what you're saying and let's know what you feel about this particular news story. And don't forget to share this new story with friends, family, relations, so that they can know what is going on in the country. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you on the other news again. Thank you and welcome on board. Have a wonderful day.